low and slow, just following the river. Sounds like a relaxed way to fly, right? But low altitude maneuvering isn't something to take lightly. Simply put, low altitude maneuvering means maneuvering at an altitude that may not offer enough time or space to recover from a stall. Let's call this area the red zone. In football, the red zone is that last 20% of the field before the offense crosses the goal line. It's where the margins for error are thin. Same with aviation. It's that area where you should be focused on only one thing, safely controlling the airplane. No. Let's be clear. We're not saying the red zone is a dangerous place and should be avoided. Not at all. In fact, it's a normal part of flying. Traffic pattern ops, environmental research, VFR under a low cloud deck all occur in this zone. It's just that flying this close to the ground requires extra vigilance and focus. Why is this important? Because more than 80% of the accidents involving stalls or spins have their origins in low altitude maneuvering. It's important to remember that an aircraft stalls when the wing exceeds its critical angle of attack. This angle is defined as the angle between the wing's cord line and the relative wind. That's all well and good, but we can't see the relative wind, and it's not necessarily opposite the direction the aircraft is pointing. And that can get us in trouble low to the ground. Take go-arounds, for example. On descent, we are typically flying at a high angle of attack and slow airspeed, often using nose-up trim to relieve control pressures. This means the relative wind is not opposite the direction the wing's leading edge is pointing. If we decide to abort the landing and at full power, the nose will want to rise abruptly. Sure, the airplane will climb, but because of the airplane's forward momentum, even with the nose pointed up, the relative wind takes a few seconds to catch up to the flight path. It doesn't take much for that critical angle of attack to be exceeded. This is also why high-speed, low-altitude buzzing passes often don't end well. The pilot pulls up abruptly to climb, but inertia keeps the airplane moving forward, even though the wing is pointed up. The relative wind can't catch up to the wing and it stalls, too low to recover. And too often, these stalls come without the typical warning signs. Making turns while low and slow can also be problematic. Whether it's S-turns on final, a 360 in the pattern for spacing, or that base to final turn, it's important to remember a few details. First, you're already at a high angle of attack to maintain lift at a slow airspeed. Second, when you turn, the airplane wants to descend due to some of its lift being diverted sideways. This is not the place to pull back on the yoke to try to slow the descent. That just increases your angle of attack even more. And since you're operating close to the ground in the red zone, it is also not the time to be distracted with anything except flying the aircraft. This is how some pilots get themselves into trouble. Circling an object on the ground to get a better look has brought down more than a few pilots faster than they would have liked. So what do we do? The first step is to recognize when you're operating too low to recover from a stall, or worse, a spin. A good rule of thumb is anytime you're below 2,500 feet AGL, your focus needs to be on positive control of the airplane, free from distractions, including unnecessary chatter from your passengers. Second, get to know the airplane you're flying. Understand how it handles at slow airspeeds. Practice slow turns at a safe altitude so you get comfortable with them, and know what power and control inputs are needed to maintain control. Practice go-arounds on a regular basis, so when you have to perform one, proper technique is second nature, and you're better able to deal with whatever made you abort the landing to begin with. Lastly, remember that most low-altitude maneuvering accidents start with pilots showing off. If you're thinking of making a high-speed, low-altitude pass to impress your friends, remember that these events often end badly. Leave the high-speed passes to the airshow pilots. And remember, we all have a responsibility to represent pilots and GA in a positive light.